Hello, I'm Jonas Lewinsky and you're watching Break the Fake. They make them, we break them and tell you all you need to know. As Poland is seeing large-scale farmer protests, Russian propaganda seems to be working overtime, trying to exploit the tensions to open a rift in Polish-Ukrainian relations and stir up hostility between the two countries. Now, the protests are driven primarily by the rapid influx of agricultural and food products from Ukraine into Poland and the European Union, as well as the European Union's Green Deal, which is nominally pro-environmental, but wrecks many long-established farming practices and is bound to leave many smaller farms across the block struggling. In tandem, these two are likely to send European grain prices skyrocketing, leaving production unprofitable. That's it for the motives of the Polish farmers. And you know, since the only farming I've got experience with is farming XP in video games, I accept that for the protesters, these are issues significant enough to drive them to the streets. Now, unfortunately, other actors are looking to profit off the protests. Actors whose goal surprisingly often align with Moscow's, including Alternative für Deutschland in Germany, the National Rally in France and Vox in Spain. The effects of their efforts are varied, but the right-wing Confederation Party in Poland is really making a go for it. Interestingly enough, prominent far-right activist recently found himself leading the protests of truckers blockading the Ukrainian border, but as soon as those demonstrations died down, he morphed into a leader of farmers' protests. The whole thing really smells like Vatnik, now doesn't it? All right, listen up. Gather round for a tale from the quirky little town of Avdivka, yes, this Avdivka, where apparently the locals had their priorities straighter than a ruler's edge. Picture this. In Avdivka there were only two things on people's minds. Bread and voting for Putin. Yep, you had it right. It's like they were living in some sort of parallel universe where desires were as limited as a broke college student's budget. At least according to Russians. Now, you might be scratching your head and wondering, was there room for any other wishes to squeeze in? But, nah, it seems like the folks in Avdivka were so fixated on their daily bread and Putin's ballot box dance that they didn't leave any space for anything else. Can you imagine that? It's like they were stuck in some kind of sitcom where the scriptwriters ran out of ideas after the very first episode. Они хотели занять какое-то село, взять его жителей в заложники и терроризировать нас этим все выборы. Это такой был план, довольно очевидный. Uh -huh. Понятно, что этого не случилось. И слава богу, опять-таки низкий поклон всем, кто причастен. Одну историю мне рассказал Сергей Кириенко, вы знаете, администрация президента. Он приехал в Авдеевку и говорит, там у людей было две просьбы. Просьба первая, дайте хлеба. Просьба вторая, дайте проголосовать за Путина. Ну, чтобы успели там участки поставить и организовать голосование. I mean, seriously, folks, talk about a one-track mind. It's like trying to play chess with someone who only knows how to move the pawns. But hey, who am I to judge? Maybe there is something in that Avdivka air that turns people into Putin-loving bread fanatics. Or maybe they just need a little nudge to broaden their horizons. Who knows? Maybe next time they'll add a third wish to their list, like getting some decent weather or finally learning how to juggle flaming torches. Hey, men can dream, right? All right now, brace yourself for a wild ride through the absurdity that is modern patriotism, Russia style. Picture this scene. You've got this self-proclaimed patriot strutting around like a peacock in heat proudly showing off what they call the glory of Russian culture. But hold your horses, folks, because we're diving into a rabbit hole deeper than a politician's excuses. Прибудет с нами победа, народ выбрал свой путь. Настало время рассвета, врага сапогом русским пнуть. Мы были и есть, а народ победитель. Мы за совесть и честь вперед, предводитель. Тебе мы доверили право вести за собою страну. На триколоре орел двуглавый встречает победу весну. Доверие тебе от народа 80 с лишним процент. Ты свежий глоток кислорода, Путин наш президент. Но о либеральной мразоте, что воняет скуля из-за бугра, найдется местечко на эшафоте, ответ дала сегодня страна. И поставим мы точку в спорах о единстве страны. 
Не победить никогда в одиночку. В стране мы сегодня верны. Now, when this so-called patriot starts flaunting their rasvitos of Russian culture, you can't help but scratch your head in disbelief. I mean, what in the world does rasvitos even mean? It's like trying to decipher hieroglyphics after a night of heavy drinking. But hey, let's give them the benefit of doubt and assume they're onto something, right? So here's Mr. Patriot strutting around like a peacock on steroids, proudly showcasing the wonders of Russian culture. It's like watching a wannabe Shakespeare perform Hamlet with a mouthful of marbles. You just can't make heads or tails of it. And speaking of tales, let's not forget the endless tales, aha, uh -huh, see what I did there, of Russian folklore and literature that our patriotic friend is so eager to shove down our throats. It's like being forced fed borscht at a vegan convention. You're not sure whether to laugh, cry, or just politely excuse yourself to the nearest exit. But hey, who am I to rain on Mr. Patriot's parade? If they want to prance around like a delusional dance instructor, let them have their moment in the spotlight. Just don't come crying to me when reality comes crashing down harder than a drunken bear at a tea party. Now, moving on, the Australian broadcaster ABC, as part of its Four Corners program, adds the documentary Ukrainian War, The Other Side, which covers the war through the eyes of Russians and shows their life at the front. We are not monsters, we are humans, and we defend our motherland. Unprecedented access. The sounds here are so much more terrifying than Donetsk. The other side of the Ukrainian war. Do they feel the West doesn't understand them? Finished. We should run now, we should go because... Oh my gosh. How old are you? 19. You lost friends? Yeah. Zelensky said this is hell on earth. So look, let's be clear about one thing. The Russians featured in the documentary are not defending their motherland. They're invaders, illegally attacking neighboring Ukraine's lands, killing its soldiers and their families. It's literally shocking that we still have to repeat this to the whole world even after 10 years of the war in Ukraine, two years of the full-scale invasion, after all the terrible massacres that we saw in Bucha, Izium and many other cities that had the misfortune of experiencing Russian military presence. Now, the Ukrainian embassy in Australia called the film the journalistic equivalent of a ball of vomit. That's an actual quote, by the way, and I like it. Also, they denounced how it gave Russian soldiers a platform to justify their brutal invasion and calls for genocide. The statement went on to say, and I quote, the tape broadcasts outright lies, racist statements and propaganda narratives emanating from the Kremlin. The Australian Broadcasting Corporation should be ashamed for airing such garbage. End of quote. The main question remains. Why, after two years of Moscow's full-scale invasion, would anyone still want to show the conflict from the Russian perspective? Who cares about the Russian perspective? The Russians have repeatedly shown themselves as occupiers, murderers. They should not be getting any opportunities to muddle the waters and try to justify their actions, not after what they did. So, no Russian perspective in the war is of any interest to us, Except, maybe, if strapping a GoPro to a flying T-72 tank turret also counts as one. And with this, we end this episode of Break the Fake. Please stay with us here on TVP World for more latest news and updates. I'm Jana Sharavinsky. Bye for now.